right. Hello there. <laughs> and welcome. Yeah. I'm uh, Michael. I'm Danny. <laughs> this and, is the uh, Legacy Premier League. Yeah. And we have the honor of uh, doing commentary for the first uh, match versus uh, Brett versus Brian. So let me just close my tabs here. Oh. Yeah, we've got Bug Delver versus a spicy brew on Brian's end. It's not quite miracles. It's it's kind of miracles. That could but, be the name, right? Not quite miracles. Yeah, not quite. It's 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 much more lower to the ground and based around trying to harness the power of monastery mentor. But it okay. still has counterbalance top because top and mentor are great together, and then counterbalance is a free roll. And we've got some terminuses in the sideboard because, you know, sometimes creatures gotta die. Sometimes creatures gotta die. That's for sure. Um, what's interesting about the deck, uh, Danny? Can you like? Um, does he have like some spicy one-offs or? Uh, yeah, or something? He's, I mean, a little. He's got. Uh, Single Council's Judgment, a single counter spell. He's got double main deck engineered explosives, uh, three main deck attacking probes, uh, 20 lands, four mentor, uh, three snapcaster. You know, kind of your standard sideboard at this point, I guess, only you've got Terminus in the board, which is not normal, but. <laughs> you know, here, here we go. Uh, I, I think it looks sweet. Uh, yeah, there's this deck list for uh, Mr. Brown doing up on yeah. your screen right now. So uh, Terminus in the sideboard, as you just mentioned before, it's um, I haven't seen that before, um, and I could imagine that during like this uh, group that he's playing uh, against today, it's against Brett Jane, which is play who's playing uh, book. Um, and I think, do you think like the Terminus is good in sideboard or should have been main in this specific matchup? I mean, in this specific matchup, I've, I've played Miracles for a long time and I always kind of, it's a drastic oversimplification, but one of the things I say is that against a lot of decks, <clears throat> the first phase of any game is you have to resolve Terminus. So it's, it's a little... <sighs> It's inter it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I yeah. admittedly was brewing a list, a very similar list, because I don't like... Like, if I want to go all-in on Mentor and with play with 20 lands, I want to. I don't want to have the clunk that the Miracles sometimes... The Miracle cards themselves sometimes give yeah. you. So, and he's got he's got Engineered Explosives, which takes care of Deathrite, which takes care of... You know, which takes care of Delver itself, especially with the rules change back in... Magic Origins, but he doesn't have a great <clears throat> out to Leovold itself. Leovold himself, which has caused a lot of resurgence for these bug lists, yeah. but I don't think Brett is playing the powerful legend from Conspiracy 2. <laughs> no, but I'm, as you're saying, like, I'm really interested to see how, because Brian 100% had, like, a thought and uh, has, like, a plan with this deck, uh, especially with the four mentors in main and the tournaments in the sideboard. So I'm Really looking forward to see how the play deck plays out. Uh, yep. And I'm not like a Miracle Master. I would like to play against this deck against uh, Death and Texas. But uh, let's see how it plays out against Buck. And uh, here we have uh, Brett's Buck list. Uh, and as you said, uh, he's not playing the, um, the Powerful Legend. Um, so this is more like the Delver deck where you go on a bit more aggressive and tempo stylish deck, it seems. Like with Days, Force of Will, and, uh, and Delvers. So yeah. uh, what do you think about this deck? Pretty standard. Um, the the spice I the spice I guess at this point is the quad him to Torok um, and the two fatal push. Fatal push yeah. is a very powerful magic card. Indeed. Uh, you know, really, in addition to level, just breathe some life into this bug archetype. I don't think it's as impactful as it is in other formats because of how good Abrupt Decay is in Legacy, just due to partially due to miracles. I'm not going to sit here and deny that that's a factor. But also partially yeah. because of how mana efficient the format is. A lot of the threats are going to be three CMC or less anyways, and it's nice to have your removal spell <clears> be uncounterable. <throat> um, the other thing I notice, though, is the Liliana, the last hope in the sideboard. That is that That's is great. something that, yeah. It is specifically uh, it is, uh, really good against um, the, miracles, uh, the Miracle decks. Uh, I played it in a similar... 
deck against the Mir uh, the Miracle decks, and it it kind of overperformed. So I really like the inclusion of that uh, girl in the in the sideboard. Yeah, I um, I haven't seen her in this format, but I buy it. Yeah. Uh, so I really like that he's uh, trying to not play Leovold and try to be more aggressive with the uh, four abrupt decays, four hymns, four days. Like he's really trying to go back into like a more Junda style of deck, but also with the tempo part. So I'm really looking forward to see uh, how this deck also like uh, reacts <coughs> to the meta, which uh, yeah, in the 16 man tournament. And I really like the way the Brit made his sideboard plan. Yeah, um, his, I agree. His sideboard looks fantastic. Yeah, uh, it has a lot of one offs, but uh, one offs. But it really seems like he's trying to cover all his bases, and he did a great job of uh, putting in a lot of cards that overlaps in different matchups. Yeah, one one hundred percent agree. <laughs> now we've um, got... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no worries. It looks like both players have kept their seven? Yep. Certainly seems like. Uh, yep. Yeah, and we're... We, got... we have the world... The Magic the Gathering world champion on the play with uh, turn one top. Yeah. So uh, I have the chat running here on the side. So let me just uh, be quick here. Um... So if there's any questions, I'll see if I can... Uh... I can like talk to the chat while I'm chatting with uh, Brett as well, uh, Danny as well. Yeah, same. so we'll, we'll do our best. Yeah, so we have a Delver uh, of Secrets, like really, really classic and good play from uh, Brett on turn one. Um, yeah, then we've. <laughs> I I think the hand cams might be a bit lagging. Uh, but we've 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 set up we we've set up or or frozen. Yeah. Uh, we've we've set up. Turn one, turn one top, turn two counterbalance, which is <laughs> so it would be a great opening against Delver, but yeah. there was Brett had an abrupt decay in the opener, which is part of the reason why the you know as alluded to earlier, part of the reason why the card's so powerful. Yeah. So Brett is kind of doing what his deck wants to do, and uh, Brian is also doing what his uh, deck wants to do. So we see that Brett has like the abrupt decay in his uh, opening hand. So this is why. The buck deck can be really, really powerful when it plays uh, the Delver Secrets and um, and this Force of Will Days Abrupt Decay plan. It it really has like a catch-all to no matter what the opponent is doing. So here, uh, Brian has played like his top into his counterbalance, but Brett still just has like Abrupt Decay end of turn if he wants to, and then he can Force of Will uh, whatever if a threat enters the battlefield or is trying to enter the battlefield. Yeah, it looks like. Brian has, if I'm I'm seeing this correctly, and I think I think we're adjusting. We've adjusted our hand cans. Yeah, he's got three copies of Counterbalance. Plus, uh, plus yeah, plus Force Backup, so he can shrug off Brett's Abrupt Decay and his Force of Will if he wants to. Yeah, it's not uh, always that uh, three copies of Counterbalance is uh, is that good, but uh, in this specific case, it's. Uh... It's working out pretty well for Brian. Yeah, I, I I like Brett's heads up play by Brett here to decay before trying to force the yeah. counterbalance, um, because it you know Brett knows Brett know, we have a, both players have the deck list. Brett knows that Brian has fives in his list, and so this way it removes the ability for Brian to fetch probably what would likely be a basic planes and then find a force of will off the top to yeah. preserve the force of will and cards in his hand. Indeed. And it also makes him like, it looks like that Brian is going to force here. Uh, yeah. Which is, uh, yeah. It, he's going to have to fight. He's going to pitch the third counterbalance. Yeah. Um, and then we have a game with uh, almost no resources. That's what happens when you fight over these uh, different decks or these different cards. So, uh, but there's still a Delver of Secrets on the board, which is. Uh, if if you were Brett, would you jam the Tarmogoyf here? Um, I think it's interesting. He knows that that Brian isn't playing like uh, Terminus. Uh, is he playing one Terminus in main or is no? It I don't zero? think he's playing no Terminus main. He's he's playing a single Council's Judgment. And uh, two engineered explosives, but arguably more important than that, he has his two drop suite consists of three snapcaster mages, four counterbalance, and one counter spell. You know you've burned through three counterbalances already. Yeah. So um, you've got five twos left in the deck with no shuffle. 
Yeah, I if I wouldn't have drawn the, him to Torf, I would definitely just have jammed um, the Tarmogoyf. But I, when you, it's either a land that Brian is keeping in his hand, or it's it's an actual good card. Uh, it could be like uh, Jace or whatever. So I think he's trying to just deplete him of resources when he has like the Delver Seekers on, on the board. So it wouldn't have been kind of brutal if it was a force. Uh, what's it called? Sword to Plowshares. But I think Brian would have fired it off. Um, on the Delver Secrets, regardless. So, yeah, I, I understand I think when, that logic. I yeah, think I'm sorry. personally more sorry. I'm personally more in favor of playing the Goyf there, uh, yeah. just because. I mean, we obviously not knowing the hand, but we know Brett knows Brian doesn't have Terminus, so if he can sneak that Goyf through, Brian's gonna have to have chain double removal spell to even try to get back in this game. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I get to say this with the the logic of hindsight <laughs> making me look right, but yeah. Brian happened to find another two drops, so that Tarmogoyf isn't resolving now. Um, um, yeah, the reason behind this, when you have the land in hand and you draw the Hymn to Tarth, you, the Hymn to Tarth will be bad next turn, uh, probably, because he's going to play the card and then uh, he will have zero cards for the Hymn to Tarth. So this is actually the best spot to cast Hymn to Tarth uh, to get the last card in the hand. Also, if you draw the, the Rough Decay to kill the Counterbalance next turn, you have a free pass for your Tamagoyf. So, so I think there's uh, some different lines. I also see like just jamming the Tamagoyf when he doesn't play uh, the Terminus would also be like really strong, because uh, you you put a you kill him a turn faster. Yeah, I. It's... But he had like it, it, in the end, it looks like he had like the fourth Counterbalance. So, even though he countered the Tamagoyf, he's still in a bad spot here. I think Brian is yeah, probably gonna he... top. Definitely needs some help. He's at seven. He's he's got a top, so he's not he's never com going to be completely out of it. Yeah. Uh, the top of his library does not seem like it's helping him though. From what I saw, it's a counterbalance and two tops. So yeah. Brett likely is not going to get to resolve another spell, but it might not matter. <laughs> no. Ooh, that's a pretty good draw as well. It is. If it wasn't locked out, you know, it's it's a good draw from Brett, but. At the bare minimum, it's locked out under counterbalance. We know, you know, Brett knows yeah. that Brian at least has ones covered. Yeah. Uh, we know that Brian has ones and twos covered. You know, he also is likely to know that Brian, he knows that Brian kept the counterbalance on top, but it's the bare minimum that twos are covered. So, ah, the, the, so it's flooded, oh, it's flooded Strand was the third card. Okay. Yeah. So there's an interesting thing here. Like, Brian, if he plays the Flooded right now, he has to fetch, like, on his own turn. So there was nothing there as a scaling turn. So he can either fetch now on his own turn or wait. But I think he needs to fetch now. So let's see what he... Uh, yeah, he fetches now yep. to see the next three cards. And then let's see if he can get an answer for uh, for the Delver. So this this is this is going to be a minor, like, technical new... Ooh. So there's Monastery Mentor. Does that count as an answer? Maybe. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does not. Does not. You're correct. I think uh, he, he probes here. He draws, yeah, but it, it doesn't really do anything, no. So this, I think this he, is going to be, yeah, pr draw probe, play top, spin top, he digs in one deeper. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then he plays the top, now he's got a spin. <laughs> As uh, Akash is uh, saying in the chat, uh, he can fetch now or scoop. He would have another, uh, uh, like, draw step, and then if he got, like, a card there, but it kind of makes no sense to not see three cards instead of uh, one card. So now we're going to the sideboard. Yep. We're seeing here that Brian is putting in... Um... <laughs> Blood Moons? Blood Moons and Disenchant, for sure, uh, is, is, what he's, is what he's dragged to the forefront. Uh so I think um, I am a Death and Taxes player, or Mono White Control player. So I think it's funny that most of the Buck decks have completely uh, disregarded like how brutal fa uh, Wasteland could be against them. So they're playing a no basic land mana base with four Wastelands, whereas most of the Miracles players have gone into more like a basic heavy um, mana base. Yeah, it's Miracle Slayers kind of have to do that. Well, because par partially now with they're cutting down to like 20 lands, you can't afford to get Wastelanded out of the game. That's one of the biggest stumbling block is. Yeah. 
Um, but it's also you you kind of have the liberty to cast your spells. I guess like I like casting my spells. You're, you're not that man intensive, and you you tend to go long. So you just you need to not get wastelanded out early. Where the Delver decks, especially with Deathrite Shaman, can kind of afford it. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely agree. But um, actually, I can see here like I didn't even notice that that because he's playing this more uh, mm. aggressive and uh, mentor heavy uh, list. He's actually playing like a lot of non basics. He's playing double volcanic and uh, triple tundras. Uh, so he's actually you can actually get him. Like, if he draws from the wrong side of his deck, Wasteland will actually be uh, good against him. Whereas, when I usually when I play against the Miracle players, they play two planes or three planes, and it's kind of hard to to get in there with, uh, with the Wastelands to actually do some, uh, some havoc. Yes. 100% One, agree. Uh, something that is interesting from what I'm looking at right now, Brian's choosing to leave Terminus in the sideboard. At least for the moment. Yep. That, you know, I, I can understand, I, I'm curious about his logic there. Maybe trying to think, he, he, I am not claiming I know better than Brian Grandu, and he is, he has a plan, he has not touched his sideboard this entire time, he is the world champion for a reason. I, <laughs> I am not, no way better than him. I'm curious what the logic is. I'm. I could see the logic being he doesn't want to draw the clunkier spells in in this kind of wasteland days heavy matchup where he's on twenty lands. So I think um, so I think terminus like this deck is more like a tempo deck with uh, mm -hmm. the him to Taurus. So I think Brian can be caught off guard with the him to Taurus, the days and um, the force of wells. So. You can, he can't really rely on the Terminus as much as he can against like um, other decks that plays creatures. So it seems like Brett, his plan is to deploy a creature and then just fight over like resources afterwards and hope that the creature sticks or just play one more creature. So if that's the plan, then Terminus will only be a one for one that has to be set up. So I think that. Uh, Brett is trying to metagame Brian, and then Brian is metagaming Brett's metagame uh, and leaving the, the Terminus in the sideboard. Yeah, and we, we also got to see this because Brett brought in his... brought in likely another... brought in Jace the Mind Sculptor out of his board because he, he does not play that in the main. We see it in his hand. Yeah. And according to the chat, he brought in Liliana the Last Hope. Yeah, so he's going like completely grindy. So... Brian probably saw his sideboard and thought, like, if he's going grindy, then Terminus is probably not where I want to be. I would like to, like, just win with Mentors before we get to that stage of the game. And him not playing, like, a, a normal, uh, really heavy Entreat, the Angel's heavy plan, he will try to, like, rely on the Mentors and try to make a quick kill uh, with some controlish resources. That's uh, what I think, at least. Yep. And yeah, I can I can see the chat as well that uh, uh, as Orsman is saying, honestly, both players sideboarding was pretty weird. Uh, I would not call it weird. Like they definitely have a plan, and we've seen the deck list for like the, the last week. So I think they know what they're doing, or at least like they scope the plan around what they want to do in this game. Yep, I, I apologize for my mic <laughs> mic issues. Uh, my my headphones my my headphones are pretty beat up. I didn't want over you know overlay the stream in the background though. Uh, pretty standard opening for both players. It looked like there was yeah. a death right from from Brett. There was oh, and there's one of Brian's haymakers in the form of Blood Moon while Brett is tapped out. So we yeah. cannot abrupt decay it. So this is um. Why both Sneak and Show and, uh, and Miracles attempt to play this uh, Blood Moon? Um, if they don't have a Force of Will, then it's uh, it's not game over because he has the Death Rush Shaman. But he he really like he pl he saw Triple shares the Death Rush Shaman. You would do that without Blood Moons. Uh, like, yep. um, but now it's pretty hard to get uh, lands in the graveyard uh, because the fetches also turn into mountains. So um, it's gonna be a uh, a tough spot for uh, Brett this game. Yeah, and in in addition to 
fetches turning into mountains. Wastelands also turn into mountains out of Brett's deck. So he's he's working on maybe another land of colored mana, and then a bunch of uh, oh gosh, I cannot remember the Triton Shorefolk, I believe from Theros. One twos for one. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is here, like um, he had to play like the Death Shaman, uh, Brett, because he needs to exile the Scaling Tarn and the Misty Rainforest to abrupt decay the Blood Moon. But yep. as we can see here, uh, the Engineered Explosives is gonna come down for one. And then he's going to pop both Death Rush Hammonds. And I actually think that uh, Brett is going to concede the game here. Uh, I can't Depending think of on what he's doing. Yep. No, yeah, he's going to yep, concede that. the game. Uh, and this is uh, one of the issues that we were talking about before, um, about uh, the Bucklists uh, running zero basics. So they can't even like prepare for the Blood Moon. They they just need to fight for, uh, over it with the uh, counter spells, or they need to have like the Death Rush Hammonds. And as we can see here, he boarded out his Force of Will, so he's also, relying a lot on the Death Rush Hammonds. That's for yeah, also boarded, also boarded out his Dazes, which makes sense being on the draw, but when you don't have any interaction, Blood Moon's going to get you. Yeah. So, so uh, the Blood Moon here, um, this also, like, the Blood Moon here really closes the game really, really qu quick, and maybe it is more like uh, Brian's plan in the, in the matchup compared to... Uh, uh, the terminus. Oh, he's boarding in Force of Wills again on the draw. Maybe I don't mind he's that. no. I, maybe he's thinking that uh, Blood Moon is is just as, so good that you need to fight even more over it on turn three, and maybe Brett will board in like Force of Wills. Yeah. Uh, for I don't mind when typically when I played Miracles in the past, or and I I drawing a lot of that because that's similar. Up oh, and just as I'm about to make this point, Brian's moving the forces back to his side and putting the Fluster Storms back in. Um, I, while being on the draw, it's sometimes nice to have a free counterspell when you're fighting over mana in the early game. But Brian decided that the extra card wasn't worth it, and the uh, pseudo-uncounterable counterspell in Fluster Storm is, is where he wants to be. And I can actually see the Scooter uh, 222 says that he can float mana and then decay it. And it is 100% uh, true. Like, he can keep up two mana on turn two. And then uh, if Brian goes, like, when he's on the play, if he goes for Blood Moon, then he can decay it. And he can also, like, try and get it out of his hand, like, early with the Thought Seizes. So, uh, but... And speaking of, speaking of Thought Seizes... Yeah. <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, what, do you, what do you take here? I would probably take the Ponder. Yeah. It's either Ponder or it's Monastery Mentor. Um, if you take Monastery Mentor, uh, you don't think you're going to draw a removal for it, and you think it's going to spiral out of hand on turn three. If you take the Ponder, you you think that uh, you have a better, like, the first four games, and then you will draw a removal before everything goes wrong. So he took the Ponder. Um, so I think next turn he'll do Death Rite Shaman yep. and hope that he can snipe uh, a, a land with a Wasteland. So let's see. Oh, I think I will play like a Death Rush Hammond here and then Ponder or in the other. So probably Ponder. Okay. He's going to pull the Delta. Yeah. So then he's. So if we're going to. Okay, fetching. So I guess. If we're fetching, if we're fetching Bayou, it's likely we're going to maybe lead double Death Ray. Try to just get around Abrupt Decay yeah. early. Yeah. Or not Abrupt Decay, excuse me. Uh, Blood Moon. Yes. And he actually Look. drew Blood Moon for, uh, yes. for the turn there. But I also like, uh, if you fetch there, you, as you say, you play double Death Rush Shaman. If you don't fetch, I like playing the Ponder first, and then keeping like the one card on top, and then you can fetch the, the two away, so you kind of like manipulate how Ponder usually works. But I also like doing just double Death Rush Shaman here. Yeah, 100% 100, 100 agree uh, with, with your line of thought and your reasoning there. And as I can see, White Face is writing in the chat that uh, Brian did a good choice of Blood Moon, and I agree. I think it's a uh, it's a spicy card having in your uh, in your mentor slash miracle sideboard. I'll definitely agree that it's a good inclusion. Yeah, it's it's super powerful. I actually I'm on back to basics personally. Uh, yeah. I think Jula set knocked knocked it out of the park. Rediscovering that card um, yeah. because for miracles specifically, it allows you to keep your fetches which are so nice yeah uh 
I'll agree that uh, they do somewhat a similar thing. So I think like the three mana enchantment, like um, trying to prey on your opponent's mana bases are are good here. And I can also definitely see back to basics being a really good card. Blood Moon is definitely the more powerful. The game ends when I land this. Option. <laughs> yeah. So I, I definitely, definitely understand why, why puns, why Blood Moon is in Brian seventy five. And Joe in the chat is saying, uh, you know, uh, problem with Blood, problem with Blood Moon is you can't cast it with uh, white mana available. Which, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whiteface is saying, I think Blood Moon is bad, but if he's got white bordered Blood Moons, if you're going to Blood Moon people, which I, I do appreciate <laughs> there for troll value as well. So let's see here. What do we got? We've got a Ponder. Uh, which. No, I, I think, uh, yeah, we got a Ponder from Brian's side here. Yeah, which I think Brian is in the tank about on whether or not he wants to do either Flusterstorm or Pyroblast. And it looks... Well, he's getting red mana. A specific instance. Yeah, that's fair. We're going with the Pyroblast. So, Brett can daze this if he wants, and then wasteland the Volk out of Brian in this situation. Yeah. Which... I don't know. I, I feel like that's got to be the... I feel like that's got to be the line, right? What else, what else? I mean, I suppose you could hold the daze and just fire and just fire off wasteland brett is sitting on two death right as his only action uh wants to try to find a way to close the game because or at least a removal spell to find brian's mentor you know deal with brian's mentor so he finds he finds some good ones he finds brainstorm death right and ponder so yeah so so he's probably gonna deploy the delver here and then yep. uh, just wasteland away as you foretold yep. Yeah, and um, he set up brainstorm. He set up brainstorm on top for next turn to be able to flip his Delver, um, yep. and that's going to be quite the clock Brian is under. With you know maybe not enough time to get him out of it, especially considering he doesn't have his third land yet. He has a ponder. Yeah. So. But um, let's see. He's probably going to ponder here, like at first, and see if he can get a fifth land. So um, not probably. Like I, I think that is the play. So let's see if he can get to yep. pet land here. He, it seems like he could, yeah. Yep. So counterspell, counter spell, flood to strand. Yeah. So he's probably gonna do the flood to strand and then just fire off uh, the pyroblast uh, right away. Oh, he shuffled or? Yeah, it looks. Yeah, it looks like he shuffled. Uh, he shuffled and drew a second fluster storm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We so, don't have the we don't have the chat, so uh, we can't see what he's uh, he's doing there. Yep. So now we're hmm, okay. I guess I, I I can I can see that he wanted he actually wanted more he wanted more impactful cards than what that was gonna yeah than what was get that was gonna bring him. I think the reasoning behind shuffling there, I would personally have kept there, but I think the reasoning behind shuffling is you have like a high percentage of drawing an additional fetch land, which is what you want there, or just a land in general. And you can draw like four sorts of plowshares uh, on that turn, which kills one card straight away. So I think you have more outs by shuffling on the two draws that you get than you actually have from... Um, yeah, from keeping those cards in your hand because you are drawing two blanks in a row, uh, getting like the fetch line. But you, you, then you also get to fetch away. Um, so I, I think it's probably close. Uh, but here he actually gets pretty good use of his Bluster Storm. He takes away Brett's turn here and double. Yep. So if he draws a land now, Brett will. It would actually be a game again. I think Brett yeah. is kind of ahead right now. And but if Brian draws like a red source, he will. He'll be somewhat back in the game, and then I saw abrupt decay. So now we're back. Yeah, ab abrupt decay off. Abrupt decay off the top is a big draw for Brett, being able to answer either Brian's blood, probably likely bl Brian's mentor, Blood Moon. He's I think Brian's a little too far behind on the board to effectively cast. Uh, not a land for Brian, and specifically not a red land, is also a pretty big draw for Brett. Yeah. 
because Brian, if my math is correct, and I'm a math major, so or I have a math degree, excuse me, I'm still not used to saying that, so hopefully it is, uh, Brian did have a, Brian was on a turn two turn clock, but Brett decided to deploy the Sylvan Library instead, which walks into a counter spell. Ooh, and both. This is a really good draw, Danny. Draw, an amazing draw from Brian in this but, sense. But, 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 as we know, there is a erupt decay. Brian or Brett is not here to do nothing. He has an erupt decay in hand, and there are enough sources in the graveyard to actually play it on this turn. So uh, let's see. Firing off, and it's really unfortunate that Brian doesn't have like the the, the double the double mana here to activate it. It would have been it would have been devastating for Brett if that engineered explosive would have uh, been activated would have 100% gotten him back in the game, uh, Brian back in the game, and now Brian is still on a turn. Especially at this point, seeing the second explosives, Brett is likely going to keep his threats back. And, yep, that's... that's Brett W. Wayne that wins, uh, wins the match. And what some might call an upset, the world champion <laughs> falling yeah. in three games. See my hair here is uh it's blown hey, away I, by uh, by the game. Yeah, you know what? As as someone who is losing his hair, I'm I'm very jealous of what of the reaction you're able to accomplish. But so um I can see here in the chat and what we're talking about. I'm just gonna adjust my cam here. Um, my hair here is, uh, we have some. Um, hey, blown away I, by uh, that's great. By Thank you very much. Um, yeah. you know, so as, as I think the, um, I'm very jealous of. I think we need to talk to Brian at some point, um, uh, if he wants to at least, uh, why he didn't keep the fetch land. Like, I think, um, the whole thing about drawing, like, you have a great chance of drawing into like a really good card, but I, I really think I would have kept the fetch land there, um, if it was if I was in the spot. I, I'm just really, really scared and. It would have taken me a bit more time to actually do the math there, but I think it would have been quite a different game in hindsight. It's easy to say at least. Uh, I, but I think you would have been able to like pyroblast the, the the Delver and then try to deploy, because um, he already like played a Tundra, so he would be super vulnerable to uh, to wasteland anyway. So, uh, but as someone in chat is saying, like maybe he misclicked on the Ponder, or maybe like he did do the math and it's actually better to to shuffle. Yeah, uh, I was actually I was going to bring up myself. Um, I was going to bring up myself that it, there was possibly a misclick. Uh, so, but it could also just be that there is sim like it's so close because uh, I can see definitely see like reasoning behind doing it. But I think the more um, safe play is to keep the the card even though you're you have two blanks on top. But I think you would just like. Fired uh, the fetch line off, anyways, uh, right away. Yeah, I, I, tr I tr absolutely, I trust Brian's logic there. I, I agree with you, especially with hindsight, that I would have kept the land. But I'm also, I'm, I'm also the kind of person who enjoys playing 22, 23 lands in Legacy because I don't like getting hit by wasteland and port and <laughs> gaze and stifle, and I like being able to actually cast my spells. <laughs> so there's. Definitely, definitely, you know, a, a skewing of my logic in that sense of, oh, land, I want it. Yeah. The way the game worked out, we get to sit here all high and mighty, but I, there's, Brian definitely had a plan, and, yeah. you know, I, I trust that the logic was sound, it just, it didn't come together. So, um... I think it's interesting that, uh, or not interesting. I think it's uh, nice to see that um, Brett actually had a plan with the with his deck, with the whole Days Force, uh, Rob Decay, Defra Shaman, like going back into the more like temple so into the you need me to share my screen. and it actually like turned out great yes. here. Uh, he got to deploy his Delver, and he, he got to go to town. So um, <laughs> uh, it's nice to see when people like reinvent old decks, or at least like 
start playing decks that were popular like once because it fits well in the meta game. So um, that, even though I'm know. sad that Brian lost, I'm also happy that uh, Brett won because uh, it was a nice deck. Yeah, um, uh, I think I think Bug Delver is a little. I like. I, I think the tempo style decks are a little underplayed right now. I also think that Stifle is very underplayed. Getting honestly, serious. Or, you know, in in the tempo spot. Right. Yeah. I'll so agree. it's good to. Good to good to see uh, it having some life in uh, the Legacy Premier League. Yeah, 